This is the second video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology NAS that is running DiskStation Manager 7. While network attached storage is simply a device that we connect to a home network in order to create a centralized location to store files, as your Synology NAS will probably not have been supplied with pre installed hard drives, before you can configure your new NAS, you will need to purchase the drives for it to use. So in this video, we're going to try and explain how something called RAID will affect the storage capacity of a NAS and provide you with a few basic pointers regarding the different types of drives that you can fit. When we initially configure a new Synology NAS, any drives that we fitted to that NAS will first need to be provisioned into something called a storage pool. A storage pool is simply one or more drives that have been grouped together to allow us to create a storage space on our NAS. Then from within that storage space, we can create something called a volume, which is an area within a storage pool that we've designated as a place that our NAS will use to store data. While a little complicated to understand, by using storage pools and creating volumes, we are given the flexibility to create custom storage spaces on our NAS that can grow in capacity over time. However, in order for storage pools and volumes to work, we need to use something called RAID, which stands for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks. RAID basically serves three main functions. The first being that we can use multiple hard drives to increase the total storage capacity of our NAS beyond the limitations of a single drive. This then has a knock-on benefit in that by simply adding another hard drive to our storage pool, we can easily increase the total storage capacity of our NAS. The third main benefit of RAID is something referred to in computer terms as redundancy. In the context of RAID, redundancy basically means that as long as we have more than one hard drive in our storage pool, RAID can distribute and duplicate our data across the drives in that pool. Then should a drive in our storage pool fail, no data will be lost and our NAS will continue to work as it will be able to pull the relevant data from other working drives. Unfortunately, one of the main problems with RAID is it can be complicated to understand and because there are so many different versions of RAID, you will need to know which version you intend to use before you start to set up your new NAS. So to simplify the process and to make it easier to implement, Synology created something called Synology Hybrid RAID. Let's see if we can better demonstrate the differences between SHR and RAID by using Synology's RAID calculator. As a general rule when using either RAID or SHR, it's best practice to fit pairs of the same make, model and capacity of drive into your new NAS. So let's get started by adding a 4TB drive into the RAID calculator. As you can see, we now have 4 terabytes of storage as long as we use Synology Hybrid RAID. However, you might have noticed that with only one hard drive installed, no version of RAID will work. Let's try adding a second drive. If we add a second 4 terabyte drive to the RAID calculator, SHR will use the second drive to duplicate what's on the first. So should either one of our drives fail, we will not lose any data. However, even though we've added a second drive to our NAS, RAID 5 still cannot be implemented with just two drives. So let's select a different version of RAID. RAID 0 combines both of our drives and creates a single 8 terabyte storage pool. However, RAID 0 will not create redundancy. So if one of the drives in our RAID 0 pool should fail, we will lose all of our data. If instead we want some sort of redundancy, we're going to have to use RAID 1, which will basically replicate what SHR created by default. Let's see what happens if we add a third 4 terabyte hard drive to the RAID calculator. SHR will now automatically increase its total storage pool to 8 terabytes, reserving 4 terabytes for redundancy. This means that should a drive fail, None of our data will be lost as copies of our data will be stored on the other two drives. However, if two of the three drives were to fail, 
then we would lose all of our data. If we now take a look at RAID 1, you can see that it will keep the usable space in our storage pool at only 4 terabytes, using 8 terabytes for redundancy. While 4 terabytes of data will be protected if two drives should fail, if we were to inadvertently use this version of RAID and wish to correct our mistake, when converting our NAS to a different version of RAID, for example RAID 5, any data stored on our hard drives will be lost as our storage pool is converted. As I'm sure you're beginning to see, while RAID is very flexible and powerful, it's also very complicated. So to keep things as simple as possible, when you first set up your new NAS, we recommend that you use Synology Hybrid RAID as it's far easier to understand and implement than RAID. However, regardless of whether you intend to implement RAID or SHR, we also recommend that before you start to purchase your hard drives, you have a play with the Synology RAID calculator so you know how different combinations of drive capacity will affect how much space you will have for storage and how much you will use for redundancy. Finally, before we leave the subject of RAID, it's worth noting that neither RAID or SHR are what we would consider to be a backup. So while redundancy will protect your data should a drive on your NAS fail, you cannot use RAID or SHR to revert to a previous version of a file or recover a file that has been deleted by a user. So while we will be covering how to make a backup in a future video, don't presume that because you've enabled RAID or SHR on your NAS that your files are now backed up. Most models of Synology NAS can either use mechanical, solid state drives or a combination of the two. However, while all models of Synology NAS should be able to accept 2.5 or 3 inch drives, different models of NAS are often limited to specific makes and models of drive. This is because, in theory, while we should be able to use any type of solid state or mechanical drive that we like, in practice not all drives are suitable for use in a NAS. Instead, as a NAS will mostly be used to serve files over a network, and your NAS will have to remain powered on for most of the time, the drives that you need to use will have to be built to a higher standard to ensure that they are quiet, energy efficient, and produce as little heat as possible. You might also find that while your model of NAS has expansion slots for PCIe M.2 SSD drives, unfortunately, Synology currently do not allow you to use M.2 SSDs for storage, instead choosing to use M.2 SSDs for only caching frequently used files. So before purchasing any storage for your new NAS, we recommend that you check Synology's compatibility list to make sure that the drives that you intend to use will in fact work with your model of NAS. However, to help point you in the right direction, with regards to researching which drives to use, we suggest that you start by taking a look at the following four makes of drive. First, we have Toshiba's N300 series of mechanical hard drives which like most of the models of drives we're about to mention, come in a variety of different sizes. Next, we have the SAT5200, which is Synology's own brand of SSDs for use in their models of NAS. We then have the HAT5300, which is Synology's line of mechanical hard drives. However, it's worth noting that the HAT5300 models of drive are actually rebadged Toshiba hard drives which are using Synology's own custom firmware to improve performance and functionality. Next, we have Western Digital's WD-RED family of drives, which unlike the other brands that we've mentioned so far, are grouped together by their different specifications and capacities. So Western Digital offer four different brands of hard drive, WD-RED SA500, WD-RED, WD-RED Plus, and WD-RED Pro. While in theory, having a range of products should give us more choice, anyone new to the world of NAS technology may find it confusing and frustrating trying to work out which of these four products to use. So for example, why should we buy a WD-RED Plus instead of a WD-RED, particularly as the WD-RED is cheaper? While the answer to this question seems to be related to the way the two different brands of WD drive record data, in that one uses SMR while the other uses CMR, as SMR is considered to have slower read-write speeds, by using an SMR drive we could adversely affect the performance of our NAS. 
This brings us to the final brand of NAS drive that we're going to mention, which is Seagate's Iron Wolf. Like WD, Seagate offer a couple of different brands of Iron Wolf drive. But unlike WD, both brands use CMR. So the main difference between an Iron Wolf and an Iron Wolf Pro are that the Iron Wolf drives are designed for home users, while the Iron Wolf Pro drives are designed for businesses and digital artists who need faster read write speeds and longer reliability. Once we've chosen a brand of drive, we then need to consider which types of drive we intend to fit to our new NAS. So should we fit mechanical, or should we fit solid state drives? Unfortunately, there's no simple answer to this question, as the type of drive that you use will be determined by what you intend to use your NAS for. So while in most cases you would fit a mechanical hard drive to your NAS, there are certain instances where you might want to fit solid state drives. However, the reason for fitting solid state drives may not be the reasons that you expect. As a home user, you might be tempted to install solid state drives into your NAS, perhaps because you believe that by using SSDs, it will give you better read write speeds. While this assumption is partly correct, as desktops and laptop computers do benefit from using SSDs, using SSDs in a NAS is not quite that simple. Solid state drives or SSDs are designed to read data at faster speeds than traditional magnetic drives, which makes them great when loading an operating system on a laptop or playing video games on a console. However, on a NAS, because your data has to be accessed through a network, the technology in that network may be limiting the speed that your NAS is able to send and receive data from its drives. For example, a typical home network may consist of a domestic internet connection with a modem connected to a wireless router, which in turn creates a simple network. So if the wireless router in this home network is only fitted with one gigabit ethernet ports, and the router only creates a wireless network using Wi-Fi 5, a mechanical hard drive should be more than capable of reading and writing data at speeds far in excess of the maximum data transfer speeds of the hardware that make up our home network. Then to complicate matters further, depending on the type of SSD you use, you might find that your SSDs are actually slower at writing data when compared to magnetic disks. This then combined with the fact that SSDs will be more expensive than traditional magnetic hard drives, offer lower capacities, and tend to get slower and eventually fail over time, you're probably starting to wonder why anyone would want to fit SSDs to a NAS. However, as SSDs have no moving parts, they will make your NAS quieter and more energy efficient. You might also find that SSDs help to make your NAS perform better, when completing tasks where the initial processing has to be done on your NAS before the results are sent to devices on your network. So if you intend for your NAS to be more than just a file server, with it also running services such as virtual machines, Docker, websites and databases, you might see a slight speed benefit by using SSDs over mechanical drives. However, one word of warning, you should never try to mix and match SSDs with mechanical hard drives so that they're all in the same storage pool. While it will do no damage to your drives or your NAS, you will not see the benefits of your SSD's faster speeds as the drives that are used within RAID or SHR will only function at the speeds of the slowest drives within their storage pool. So if you intend to use both mechanical and solid state drives in your NAS, you will need to create two storage pools one for your slower mechanical hard drives, and one for your SSDs. You then need to make sure that only the files and documents that your NAS will be serving to your network are stored on your mechanical drives, and things like databases or virtual images are stored on your SSDs. So to summarize, in this video, we try to explain the purposes of storage pools, volumes, and RAID in relation to a Synology NAS. We then explained what Synology Hybrid RAID is and why we recommend that you use it. Next, we took a look at the four manufacturers of NAS drives that we think you should consider using in your new NAS. Finally, we talked about the advantages and disadvantages of both mechanical and solid state drives. In the next video in this series, 
We're going to take a tour of the different ports, sockets and connectors you can expect to find on a typical Synology NAS.